In this class, we're going to consider how you change the subject of a formula, or sometimes it's called rearranging formulas. This is really an important core key skill in algebra. You're never going to get away from this one, I'm afraid. Um, changing the subject of formulas, rearranging them, uh, just tends to come up in a lot of different math courses, different topics, different techniques. So this is one to give particular attention to. So make sure that everything we chat about today makes sense. Um, and then definitely, and more importantly, try a whole bunch of practice questions um, if you can on the back of this. So the good news is that solving an equation and rearranging a formula are very similar. So if you've already done equation solving or even just worked with manipulating, simplifying algebraic terms, then you'll already probably have most of the core skills that you need for this topic. So what are we looking at here? So we've got basically formulas. I mean, these are just made up formulas. They don't necessarily mean anything. But in the real world, you've got formulas, I mean, millions of formulas that do mean something. And sometimes we want to change the subject of a, of a formula. So at the moment, it might be set to A equals, but we think, hey, we don't want it to be A. We might want the R instead. How would that formula look if it was R equals? So an example would be something like convert it. If you've got a formula that converts say temperature, so centigrade, Fahrenheit, you might have it set up so that you can convert from Fahrenheit to centigrade, but you might want to convert from centigrade to Fahrenheit, so you need to change that formula around, so you've effectively got two versions of that formula. One goes one way, one goes the other way. That's what we're talking about here, and that's why you might want to do it, because you might want to convert things the other way around. In the real world, you'll have formulas that mean something, but it doesn't really matter if they mean something or if they're just made up like these formulas. The process for changing the subject would, would be the, the same. Most of the formulas you'll see are just going to be algebraic, um, made up algebraic things, which some horrible math teacher somewhere has come up with. So they might not necessarily mean anything. So we'll start with this kind of entry level question. We're going to work our way through different scenarios um, but there are far more scenarios than I can cover here. You can see all sorts of equations. Some have got squares, cubes, higher powers. Some have got brackets, some have got fractions. It's difficult to cover every possible scenario. That's why I'm saying just make sure that the skills I'm talking about here make sense, but then try a bunch of your own practice questions as well. Okay, right, so enough talking for me. So to the question. So this question at the moment, the subject of the formula is A. That just means that it's set up as A equals. We want to make R the subject of the formula. So we want to end up with R equals. So one way you could do this is just flip, move the R term over here, move the A term, just like you're kind of solving an equation, but instead of solving it for R and getting some numerical value, you're just gonna get a rearrangement of all the other uh, numbers and letters and that's fine that is how we're thinking of it but one little trick you can do with these if your variable that you're interested in is on the wrong side of the equation just start by spinning the equation around so equations don't care if you write them left to right or right to left so that there is still the same equation but the benefit of doing that now we've got the r term on the left where we kind of want it because generally we want our subject letter to be on the on the left rather than on the right. So now we can just say, okay, we'll move the seven, minus seven to the other side to get a plus seven, divide on both sides by five, and we get a plus seven over five, and that is our rearranged formula. If we did that one the other way, if instead of doing that flipping round thing, we just moved the terms, then we would get a minus five r over here on the left, because that's a positive, so it becomes negative on the other side. We would get minus seven minus a on the right. We would then need to divide by minus five, which is okay, but you can see already all of these negatives, it's a little ugly, isn't it? You could still fix it, because if you're dividing by a negative, that just makes the whole thing negative, so these negatives effectively um, cancel, so you would end up with seven plus a over five, and that is the same thing as that. Seven plus a and a plus seven are the same thing. I would recommend though, going with uh, this method here. I think this one's more effective. You're not always gonna have the option. 
to flip your equation around. You might have some where you've got to kind of go down this route. But again, it's just gaining enough experience of these question types to know what to do in every scenario. Okay, so we changed the subject of the formula there from A to, to R. These are the same formula, just written backwards. This one, we're gonna change the subject to B. So at the moment, the B is kind of locked up there inside the, the bracket. So we need to expand the bracket to get the B out of the bracket. So just starting off by expanding the bracket. So we get 3B minus three times minus 4A, which will be 12A. I'm gonna take the A term over to this side. So it's a minus 12, it would become a plus 12 on the other side, combining that with this one. In fact, let me just write that. So it'll be A plus 12A equals 3B. So you get 13A equals 3B. Spinning the equation around at this point, to get the B on the left hand side, so we get 3B equals 13A. You'll find your own kind of style with these as well. There's, there's more than one way um, to do them. You don't necessarily have to follow exactly the same method as everyone else. Not everyone will spin that around at that point. That's up to you. I just did that to get the B on the left. Dividing both sides by B. I'm actually just going to move this example. So 7A squared minus 3 equals b, I think it was. Then just dividing both sides by 3 and we get b equals 13a over 3. There's no way really to predict how these are going to come out. I mean that final answer looks nothing like where you started. You've just got to kind of work through and trust the algebra. The same over here, this doesn't really look a whole lot like this. This one maybe looks a bit more like this than this guy does but it's really difficult, you can't really predict, so don't expect there to be any particular form of the final answer. We'll come back to this one in a second, let's have a look at this guy. So let's make, um, let's make y the subject of the formula this time. So notice I looked at that and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to make the subject. You could make any of the letters the subject. You, if you've got multiple variables like that, you might want to practice making each of them the subject. I'm going to go for the y, um, not sure why. Or should we go for the x? Let's go for the y. So I'm going to take all the terms that have got a y in them to, to one side and I'm going to take everything. No, do you know what? Let's actually go for the x. The x is going to be more difficult. So I'm going to take all the terms that have got an x to the left hand side. So leaving that x there because it's already on the correct side. Taking the xy term, remember that's one thing, xy. Taking that over to the left would be minus xy taking the minus 3 over to the right. So we're just separating everything out. We're getting everything that we're interested in on one side and everything we're not interested in, everything that's not part of the subject on the other side. Same as we did here. Here we tried to effectively just end up with all the Bs on one side, everything else on the other side. All the Rs on one side, everything else on the other side. Difference this time is we've got two terms that have got X in them and we want to combine those. So if they were number terms, if that said something like 3x minus 2x, then you would just say, hey, I can actually subtract those because 3 minus 2 is 1, that would just be x. In this case, it's a bit more difficult. We can't combine a 1x with a, a yx because they're not like number terms. What we can do instead though is use a factor of x. So in other words, factorize that expression with x as a common factor. That's a fairly common technique that you'll see quite quickly once you get into these questions and um, to have to do that. So if they're numbers, you can combine them. If they're not, you might need to factorize them. X is a factor, so we get one minus Y. If you're not sure what I did there, just maybe uh, check that out again. But basically I just factorized those two terms using X as a common factor and rewriting the other part in the bracket. So we wanna get this all the way to X We've got x times the bracket, so we can move the bracket, but it has to be a divide on the other side. So just like equations, always doing the opposite operation on the other side. So plus becomes a minus, minus becomes a plus, multiply becomes a divide. So all we're going to do is divide the right-hand side, which is 3 plus z, and divide that by 1 minus y. So 1 minus y, and that's our rearrangement. So this guy and this guy are the same formula, just written with a different subject. X is now the subject of the formula. In fact, this one didn't even have really a subject because it was just all jumbled up. It wasn't written as like 
y equals or anything like that. So that's a slightly more difficult example, that one, I would say. Turning our attention then to this one, let's have a look at making a the subject. At the moment, b is the subject. It's b equals all of this stuff. We want to flip that around to a. We've got some slightly more difficult things to deal with here, particularly the square root. Okay, so minus 3 equals b. So, yeah, so we're going to start just by moving the 3 to the other side. Learning the order in which to do things is probably the biggest challenge in this topic. You can do things in different orders, but doing them in the less than ideal order makes everything more difficult and it makes it more chance of making a mistake. Generally, dividing is the last thing we want to do, but that kind of gets superseded by if you've got a square root. So notice here, the last thing we did was divide by 5. Here we divided by 3. Here we divided by the bracket. So dividing was the final thing we did. We're going to divide on the second to last line here because we've got a squared. We're going to have to take a square root to get rid of that squared. Squares and square roots we tend to leave until last, but not always. That's again why you need to gain experience of these. So dividing by 7, we're going to get b plus 3 over 7. So we're almost done at that point, but we've got a squared. We don't want a squared, we want a. To get rid of a squared, we do the opposite of a squared, which is a square root. Or think of it as just taking the square root of both sides of your equation at this point. That's another way you could imagine doing that, that idea of balancing the equation, because a formula is an equation. So you can take normal equation sort of theory and techniques into that. So pulling this guy up here, square root of a squared, well the squared and the square root cancel to give us just a, that's why we took the square root to get rid of the squared, and that would just leave us with, there's nothing we can do with that other than just write it with that big square root around the b plus 3 over 7. That's a fairly common kind of format for a rearrangement. If you see an equation, a formula I guess, with a squared in it, it's likely your final answer will come out to have a big square root around some horrible algebraic term at the end. So you can see there's quite a variety of formats of final answer, there's quite a variety of question types. That's really only the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole bunch of forms that can come up in these. Just practice as many varieties of question as you can. They are difficult at first, even if you've got some algebra experience, because they're unusual. They just, they're all so different you can't really look at them and say, yeah, that seems like it could be the right answer, or yeah, that's definitely the right answer based on the original formulation. You've just got to kind of trust the algebra and get really sharp with your algebra. So when you're working practice questions on this topic, pay particular attention to whether you're getting them correct or not. It's very easy to skip on and think, oh, I'm kind of getting most of them right. I've got this topic down. With these ones, I would say make sure you've got it totally down because you don't want to be carrying a mistake through all of these, which is going to come back to bite you in the future. So make sure that makes sense. There's quite a lot to take in there. It's not easy. And once you're kind of comfortable with that, work as many practice questions as you can before your brain explodes. Super important topic.